the Joe Rogan experience. Now, obviously, the next course of progression for a guy like you would be MMA. Yeah. Now, I know that you had talked about doing MMA in the past, but now it seems like it's actually going to happen. Yeah. Um, so John doesn't want me to compete in MMA because he feels like jiu-jitsu is just about to break into that next level of professional sports. Uh, so for me, at least right now, I feel like I need at least someone from my team to be able to do the things that I'm doing before I can kind of move away from jiu-jitsu into MMA. Because right now we have Gary in MMA. He's carrying our flag, our team's flag in MMA. And we have me at the top of the heap in jiu-jitsu. So like if Craig or Nicky Rod or my brother um, can start doing the things that I'm doing and they win in ATCC Absolute maybe or you know, they go out and they start beating and submitting all the high-level guys, then I feel like maybe I can leave uh, jiu-jitsu. Because if I start fighting MMA, I'm going to focus on MMA. Um, so I feel like if one of my teammates can kind of take my place, then I can start moving into MMA and then and go from there. So you look at it as a – you really do genuinely look at it as a team effort. You're not yeah. looking at it just as your yeah. as an individual. Mo most athletes are very selfish and they just take, 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 whereas we have, we have a – we have a very great, a very good team cohesion, and uh, you know we're always looking out for one another. And you know I find that that's the way that people operate best. Um, if you look at most teams, it's basically just a bunch of tough guys in a room who train together, who have no loyalty, and if someone offers them a better deal, they're going to go somewhere else and, and train there. Um, whereas that's like, uh, whereas with us, we're very loyal to John, and uh, you know everything that everything that we do. Is the same like my game is very similar to John's very similar to Gary's very similar to Craig's we all are taught by John and we all follow the same ideas and the same philosophy of jiu-jitsu so the loyalty within the team is uh, is very strong and uh, you know I, I feel that it's all it's always gonna be a team effort um, you know without without John I wouldn't be as good as I am without Gary I wouldn't be as good as I am without Nikki it's the collaboration of minds in the gym that that really pushes you forward. Um, so you know, I feel like we're different in that in that sense. That we're not a team that recruits people. We're a team that builds that builds athletes from almost the ground up. Like you see, like a you know, a lot of the big MMA teams, uh, or even the big Jiu Jitsu teams, like Atos, for example, they recruit guys, guys who are already successful. They recruit them. They give them a place to live. They give them a training program, and they they just recruit tough guys. But if you look at a guy like Andre. And you look at his black belts, they all have vastly different games. Kynan's game is different than Andre's. Hanger's game is different than Andre's. Keenan's game is different than, than Andre's. And it's basically just a team of recruited guys who are a bunch of tough guys training in the same room. Whereas John, we have a team of homegrown guys who all do the same thing. Like they all have discernible games that all mimic what John teaches. Uh, and they just have you know, slight changes and variations due to our physical attributes and, and, uh, and, and uh, personalities. Now, when you say you think of it as a team, you, I mean, this is taking it to a completely different level because you're not willing to progress your career outside the realm of jiu-jitsu until someone else can carry the crown. Yes. That's, that's next level commitment to the team philosophy. Yeah. yeah, I mean, like I said, you have a guy like John who's like the most selfless person in the world. Like he shows up every day and he gives you everything. Like, you know, I want, I want what's best for the team uh, even if it's not what's best for me. You know, I, wanna, I want what's, what's best for... For, for John's team, uh, you know, I want him to go down in history as being the guy who had the absolute best team in the world. And, um, you know, right now you can make the argument that sure, you know, Gordon's the best in the world, but the rest of the guys don't win as much as him. So uh, I want to get those the rest of the guys on my team to to my level so that you don't have the argument anymore of sure, Gordon's good, but he's the only one who really wins when it counts. Um, you know, I want I want to go into ADCC with my team, and I want to win every single division. <laughs> so that would be insane. That, you know, that's not outside the realm of possibility either. That's what's crazy. Yeah, I mean, next year we have Gary might cut to sixty-six kilos. So if Gary's at sixty-six, my brother will be at seventy-seven. Craig will be at eighty-eight. I'll be at ninety-nine if they let me do the division, and then Nikki Rod will be at ninety-nine plus. What so. do you mean if they let you do the division? So for ADCC, when you win the absolute, you go to the super fight. So the, 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 the super fight champion fights the winner of the absolute. Now, I won the absolute last year, so I'm only supposed to have one fight. But mm. I have requested to do the weight division as well because you normally would just do the super fight. But I want to do the super fight, and I also want to do my weight division. So I'd have, instead of having one match, I'd have five matches. No one's ever asked to do that. People have asked to do the absolute before, but the problem is if I win the absolute and then 
I win the super fight, the super fight winner is supposed to fight the absolute winner. So you can't fight yourself. Right. So you it doesn't make sense to do the super fight and the absolute, but it does make sense to do the weight division and the absolute. So if I if I if they let me do the weight division, I'll be the first person in history to ever to ever do the weight division plus the super fight at the same time. Wow. Now, how is Gary juggling training for MMA and and jujitsu as well? That guy's a machine. He basically just he didn't he didn't do less jujitsu to do MMA. He just added MMA on top of the jujitsu sessions. So he trains MMA seven days a week, and he spars lightly seven days a week, and then he finishes that. And right now we don't have a gym set up in Puerto Rico, so we're working around the schedule, the class schedule of the gym owner. So we have M- he does MMA at nine. And then he s- trains for like an hour, spars. Then he has like a thirty-minute break, and then he does, uh, and then he does jujitsu at eleven, and he just adds the session on. So he does MMA and jujitsu seven days a week, and like within like two hours of each other. And when he's training MMA, he's also grappling. Yeah. So he's grappling twice. Yeah. Most most of the MMA training is, is shoot boxing, is standing to takedowns because he's already so good on the ground. He needs to get, he needs to work on fence wrestling and and shoot boxing. Uh, but he definitely he de- de- definitely is some grappling when he does MMA. So he, he grapples and, and spars, and then he pretty much goes right to jiu-jitsu and has to do that. So, I mean, that's definitely not an easy thing to do, and seven days a week is definitely not an easy thing to do. And how is he doing it in terms of striking coaching? Like, is he Did he bring someone with him to Puerto Rico? Was he using a different person in New York? What was he, he doing? He uses John. John is our striking coach. Really? I'm telling you, John knows just as much about every martial art as he does jiu-jitsu. Like John is our wrestling coach, John's our jiu-jitsu coach, John's our striking coach, John's our MMA coach. Like John coaches Jack Gary for every aspect of MMA, wall wrestling, everything. Holy shit. Yeah. So he coaches him for kicking and everything? Yeah, <laughs> dude, people don't know this about John. John's first martial art was Muay Thai. John did Muay Thai for over a decade when he was growing up. And he studied all the best Muay Thai guys. I mean, John knows a lot about striking. I mean, he he coached, like I said, like people don't know this about John. They think he's just a leg lock guy or just a grappler. Like he coaches Gary and like Gary's like, he's progressing fast as far as the striking is going. Um, He's only been striking for a year and a half now and He's, uh, you know, he looks, he looks comfortable out there. He does. Um, and uh, that's shocking that he's only been doing it a year and a half. Uh, yeah, a year and a half, two years maybe. Uh, but yeah, John's his coach. John, John, John coaches everything. <laughs> Catch new episodes of the Joe Rogan Experience for free only on Spotify. Watch back catalog JRE videos on Spotify, including clips. Easily, seamlessly switch between video and audio experience. On Spotify, you can listen to the JRE in the background while using other apps and can download episodes to save on data cost all for free. Spotify is absolutely free. You don't have to have a premium account to watch new JRE episodes. You just need to search for the JRE on your Spotify app. Go to Spotify now to get this full episode of the Joe Rogan Experience.